Hello and welcome to this review of the Once Upon a Dukedom historical romance book series by Lorraine Heath. I'm Olivia, your new favorite resource for book recommendations you can easily screenshot, and you're watching Random Olive Reads. So first I'll go into a little bit of a series overview. It's three books that follow the events of the previous series. So if you're reading Lorraine Heath's backlist, it ties together with her previous books. Now, I highly recommend that you read these three books in order because the sequence of events happens right after the other. And so we have our Stanwick siblings whose father has ruined the family because he was arrested for treason. And so all, all of their property, money, titles, everything was like reclaimed by the queen. And so they basically have to start over from scratch. There is a sister of the story, and she finds her love in a previous book. First up in this series is Scoundrel of My Heart, and we kind of start off with the lady of the series, or the book, who needs to marry a titled gentleman so she can claim her inheritance, which is like some small cottage that her grandmother left her. But she's not really interested in marriage. She just wants to go to this cottage and live there forever. And so she's kind of gossiping with her friend. They find out that a stuffy duke has put an ad in a newspaper to find a wife. And so her friend's older brother, who is often overlooked because he is a second son and not the heir to the dukedom, has decided to help her apply for the duchess position. And so that's really like the first third or so of the book. We have a little bit of a time jump after that because we find out that Griffith's father, the Duke, is hanged for treason, and we find them again maybe six months later. And so our guy Griffith, he's actually accomplishing his goals. He has opened up his gambling hell or casino, trying to recoup some of his money. Still not entirely appropriate for Catherine to marry because he's well now he definitely has no title because his father is completely disgraced Catherine meanwhile is being courted by the duke with the intent that he will someday propose these two people can't seem to stay away from each other obviously this best friend's older brother is the ideal match for her and what I like about this book is some of the little plot details that happen earlier on in the book that are seemingly insignificant, they come back into play later on in a really sweet and thoughtful way. So the second book is The Duchess Hunt, and we detour a little bit from the disgraced family to catch up with the jilted Duke from the last book. And so he is still looking for a wife, and this time he puts another advertisement in the newspaper, and instead of reading all of the applications and letters himself, he's decided, you know what, I'm just going to have my secretary deal with it. She, she can read all of the letters and tell me who to pick as a wife, right? Um, the heartbreaking part is that she has been in love with him forever, and can't do anything about it because she's a secretary and not at all duchess material. And after a while, he starts to realize, you know, I really can't function or live my life without my secretary. And wait a minute, I think I'm attracted to her. So they sort of start an affair, but he knows that he still needs to marry someone appropriate. So there's kind of a time limit on this affair. Also, she's got like some identity secrets, things in the background that are kind of not really that important. What I liked about this book is that it's really big on this quiet compatibility. Like These two people just work really, really well together and anticipate each other's needs and it's really a strong partnership that they formed from working together all of these years. Also all of the Duke's friends know that his secretary is like the most important person in, in his life and this Duke was just like clueless the whole time. Um, we'll see these Duke's friends later in a future series so I'm looking forward to that. 
Last up, we have The Return of the Duke, which is the third and last book of the series. We have the oldest son of that disgraced duke who he's got no money, no property, no future. So he might as well find out the truth about his father and figure out like, hey, was this a setup or was my father really someone that couldn't be trusted. So he starts off at his father's mistress's house to get information. And it turns out that mistress wasn't really a mistress. She was just a cover story for the Duke meeting up with shady characters. And then it turns out even that she's actually a spy and she has been spying on the Duke to figure out hey, what do you know about this treason plot? But with that false front of being a mistress and not knowing what's going on. So ultimately, these two have to team up to figure out the treason plot and figure out like, hey, was the old duke set up? What's going on? Overall, this story was not my favorite, mostly because the spy espionage plot is not my favorite. But Overall, this whole series was really enjoyable. My favorite of the bunch was The Duchess Hunt because I love that whole strong partnership aspect of it, but you really can't go wrong. This whole series is really good. Thanks so much for watching this video. Links to all the books that I talked about are in the description box. Like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos, and you can follow me on Instagram at randomolive.